Well, if you have been following my Instagram account, you probably came across a few stories two weeks ago showing me not being happy about something. Today, we're going to be talking about two subjects that many of you have been asking me to do, which are flossing or snagging and improper fish handling. These are two subjects that I don't talk about very often simply because I get kind of frustrated when I talk about it. And the other thing is, even though I have been pretty involved in fishery issues in the last 20 years, I still feel like I'm not the vocal authority when it comes to talking about these issues. But since many of you have been asking, and some of the stuff I've seen this year haven't made me very happy, I feel like I need to be doing this. So let's watch some of these video clips. Back in early November, we had quite a bit of rain in Chilliwack, which made the Vitter River high and dirty. Um, water level came up a couple of feet and water was quite brown, so visibility was really down, which means salmon can't really see what you're offering, meaning that fishing wasn't that great. Nevertheless, there were quite a few people out fishing still, which isn't really a bad thing because you want people to be enjoying the outdoors when they can, right? I sat by the Vita crossing to watch people fish for quite a few hours and um, the more I watched, the more, um, I guess, the wrong things I could point out throughout the day and uh, I feel like I need to be somewhat vocal about it in this video um, just so that anyone new coming out here to fish um, wouldn't fall down towards that path. Um, so the first thing is I want to talk about flossing. Um, when we come out to fish, I guess the intent is to make the fish to bite. Um, the fish sees what you're offering, they'll bite the hook, you hook them, and that will be a legal catch, right? Um, snagging fish, meaning that if you are casting out and jerking the rod, intentionally snagging fish, that will be illegal. Um, there's a bit of a loophole there, so gray area. So watch this video right here and watch these individuals fishing. They're fishing in an area where the water is quite fast and um, if you watch closely, um, when the drift they're doing, every cast, the drift is only a couple of seconds long. This is not long enough um, and water is too fast for the fish to see your offering. So clearly these fish are not biting. Um, basically what they're doing is they're sweeping a run um, hoping that they'll intercept the fish by hooking them, um, I guess, by chance, by accident. Well, is it ethically wrong? Uh, in my opinion, it is, uh, but it's not really up to me to decide. Ethics is really subjective. Um, I think it's something that uh, it's not, uh, I guess, regulations. So it's not exactly black and white. Everyone has a different ethical point of view. And uh, for some people who just, just want to come out to harvest fish, this would be a legit catch. They'll, you know, they'll hook the fish, bring the fish up. If it's a legal um, fish that can be kept, then they'll keep it. Um, what would be the difference between this and the fish that I'm catching? It's really hard for me to argue that. Um, if there isn't a conservation concern, which is the case in the Veda River, uh, when it comes to hatchery coal salmon and Chinook salmon, um, yeah, it, they're really, isn't it really a difference between catching a fish by enticing them and flossing them, right? The problem is, um, this is fishing um, non-selectively, meaning that you're basically hooking fish randomly and you're hooking fish, you're hooking any kinds of salmon species, you're not targeting one particular salmon species. So when I go out and fish, if I'm casting spoons and spinners, or if I'm fishing, if I'm bait fishing, under the float or fishing with a bead, um, I'm targeting cold salmon only, uh, mostly. I'm trying to fish in areas where there is any cold salmon, especially in years when chum salmon fishing is closed. In this case, um, every fish is being randomly hooked. You could be hooking a hatchery cold salmon, which is great, you can keep that. You could be hooking the chum salmon, which you're actually not supposed to target, which is bad and you could be hooking a cold salmon which you have to release as well. You could also be foul hooking fish because a lot of times these fish are not necessarily just hooked near the mouth. I mean the fish are not biting so the fish could be hooked um, under the chain, could be near the mouth but it could be under the stomach, it could be on the tail, it could be, just, it hook, it could be hooking fish anywhere. So it's um, I think it's a tough call. So 
I've had conversation with fishery officers before, and um, if they can determine this is um, intentionally snagging fish, then they would actually ticket the individual. But again, it's just by watching that, it's really hard to determine that, especially for new anglers. Um, I've heard from new anglers who are coming out to here to fish. A lot of times they say, what am I doing wrong? I'm not catching anything. Well, the next guy is hooking fish left and right. My suggestion is that you should pay attention to what that individual is doing. If he's kind of sweeping around, just hooking fish left and right, but not necessarily in the mouth, but snagging fell hooking fish by accident a lot, then you probably have to question his or her method. And the other thing that really frustrates me when it comes to flossing is that if I'm trying to entice a fish to bite in a run and someone else is doing this, just randomly casting and hooking fish uh, however they can, then it really spooks up the run and that really turns the fish off. The fish will not bite, especially cold salmon, they will stop biting um, when there's a lot of this going on. Um, so my suggestion to new anglers is that if you come out, you should try to learn how to fish the proper way, um, which is by enticing the fish to bite. Try to avoid fishing in this kind of water. Um, this is kind of pointless if you're trying to get fish to bite. Um, fish are not going to be sitting in fast water like that. They're just traveling. And uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun if you can get fish to bite. And uh, it's not all about harvest. So whenever it's flossing, there's also other illegal activity revolves around it. So one thing that I pointed out in a previous video is that releasing fish um, not in the right way. This is in fact illegal and I've talked to fishery officers about this. If you don't release fish properly, if you um, release fish in a harmful manner, then you will be ticketed. Uh, so in this case, I filmed quite a few guys releasing fish uh, not in the right way. Um, so fish are being dragged up along the riverbank uh, so if you watch this fish right here, it's being dragged up. The angler is standing further back, taking his time. Then the fish flop around and not even attempting to release the fish properly. He's grabbing onto the leader and hooking the fish while the fish is flopping on the ground on dry land. Once it's unhooked, he doesn't bring the fish to the water. He just kind of lets go um, on the rear bank and it flops back into the water. So here's another one. Here's a charm salmon that's being dragged up the riverbank. No one's attempting to get in the water to release it. You're actually not supposed to be fishing for charm salmon right now. So you should be releasing these fish in the water. So here's a cold salmon that has been dragged up the shoreline. Um, the angler's looking at it, looking at it. Fish is flopping around. It's and I'm filming this pretty far away, so I don't know whether this fish is well, the hatchery. Um, so just watching it. So 10 seconds go by, 20 seconds go by. It is clearly not a hatchery fish because otherwise the angler will be frantically trying to bonk it right there. Um, so he's grabbing onto the fish, hold the fish up, came down to the river and the the fish go. And that fish was out of the water for at least 20, 30 seconds, which is just way too long. They shouldn't be out of water in the first place. So here we have another chum salmon that's being dragged up the river bank. Um, it's flopping around and the angler is not using, her angler has got one hand on the rod and the other hand free. And he's using his legs to just kind of control the fish, which is, Ridiculous. Here we have a coho jack. Um, it's being foul hooked on the abdomen. The angler is picking up. This is what happens when you try to floss. Here we have another chum salmon that's being dragged up the riverbank. Again, I was filming this pretty far away from across the river, so I actually couldn't tell at the time whether this was a coho or chum salmon. At first, I saw the angler unhooking the fish. Um, grabbing the fish upside down. So I thought, oh, okay, that must be a hatchery cold salmon. And I stopped filming. Um, I didn't pan the camera to film what was happening there. But it turned out to be a chum salmon, which the angler was releasing out of the frame. 
here we have another cold salmon flopping around on the dry bank. Um, again, I couldn't tell if this was a hatchery fish or wild fish. He's taking his time uncooking the fish while the fish is flopping around. 10 seconds go by, 15 seconds go by, and yes, it is a wild fish. And he grabbed the fish by the gill plates and let it go in the end. So here we have a coho jack that's struggling and flopping on the ground while the angler trying to identify it. The angler grabbed the fish and the fish fell two feet in the air onto ground. Can you imagine if you were a coho jack and if, if you fell the equivalent of that, that two feet, that would be about three, four stories high. You would die. You have some kind of head trauma at least. Um, so that fish most likely didn't survive after that. So here we just have blatant neglect when it comes to fish handling. Um, the fish had been dragged up um, the river bank into the shallow water behind the run. Um, it's being left there. Another angler say that's not something you can keep. So the fish is just being ignored. It's floating down the channel and um, another angler trying to like, it's got his hands free and um, he's just kind of letting the fish floating downstream. Eventually if it made its way down back into the run. Okay, so here's a good one. Here we have a cold salmon, a wild cold salmon that's been dragged up on the river bank. It's flopping around. There's five people standing around. Everyone's got their hands in the air. Nobody's touching the fish. Nobody's looking, really looking at the fish. The fish has been unhooked. And once it's unhooked, everyone's looking around, not looking at the fish. The fish is sitting there. Okay, it's a wild cold salmon, which cannot be kept. It's protected. The fish is flopping around trying to find its way back into the water, eventually made it all the way to near the river bank, then someone just kind of nudged it back into the water. It's really, really pathetic. So when it comes to fish handling, here's two things. So one is that always keep your fish in the water. Ideally, you want to have a catch and release net and netting your fish in the water. Keep your fish in the water, identify in the water. If you can keep the fish, great, bring the fish out and dispatch it right away. If the fish has to be released, um, unhook the fish in the water, release the fish quickly in the water. If you want a photo, pick it up really quickly over the water, take a quick photo and put it back. None of this business of dragging the fish up the river bank and um, that just defeats the purpose of catching and releasing fish. Um, these fish are, you got to think about, so these fish have been fighting on your fishing line for a few minutes. Um, it's building up lactic acid, so it's struggling already, going through anaerobic respiration, um, struggling to gain oxygen. Then it's been dragging up on the river bank where it can't get any oxygen in the air um, because it's out of the water. Um, it's getting damages um, while it's flopping around on dry land, you know, hitting its head on the gravel, on the rocks, um, having its slime removed um, on, by scraping along the rocks. And um, it just blatant disregard when it comes to proper fish handling in this case. And um, I don't know, we did phone the fishery officers. Um, they did come down and I think someone, else, someone did get fined. But something like this, we really need um, fishery officers to be there observing it for a period of time. And, um, and I think that <clears throat> um, education is definitely important. Um, by doing these videos. Um, anyone new come here to fish, um, I hope that you can handle fish properly, not like this. Um, if for individuals like this, which obviously they, they know what they're doing, they've done this many, many times, they keep doing the same thing, a few fines being handed out would be great. And I think that was set a good example to, um, to really deter the behaviors over time. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. Besides that, I, I um, you know, I've, in the past, I've talked about what you need to do, um, what, what are the right things to do, but I've never really done videos on what are the wrong things that you shouldn't do. And um, so I'm glad that I could get some examples here to show to you. Unfortunately, this year I've seen more poor behaviors than previous years. I'm usually pretty optimistic when it comes to, you know, giving people the benefit of the doubt and, uh, you know, thinking that people will do the right thing. But this year is definitely has been an increase on, I guess, infractions, um, which is not a great thing. 
I fished this river system for over 20 years now and um, and let me tell you back in the early 2000s about 20 years ago it used to be a lot busier and I would say the last decade or so um, behaviors has gotten a lot better um, throughout through education through just it's just better compliance for whatever reason and there's been less people fishing believe it or not in the last 10 years than the first in the early 2000s um, but it perhaps we just we had a pink salmon opening this year we had a sockeye we had a Fraser River sockeye salmon opening last year um, we got in more new anglers and um, and maybe a lack of education in the last couple of years um, was a result of what we're seeing right now and something that I've been <clears throat> working on with fishery officers and I think next year um, we definitely will have to ramp up some of the education um, effort um, to make sure we can to make sure everyone will behave better out there um, these fish deserve a lot of respect um, there's plenty of them and uh, we should go out enjoy them and do the right thing by um, harvesting what we can legally and releasing fish the right way so we can have fish in the future. So let me know what you think. This is a pretty hot topic, so I'm sure the comment section is going to light up. And uh, so make sure you give us some feedbacks. Um, through the Sport Fishing Advisory Committee, I'm always in communication with fishery officers, managers, and um, trying to make this fishery better for everyone. So any feedbacks would be great. Um, love to hear from you. And uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate your support so I can make videos like this available to all of you. And until next time, good luck fishing.